Good morning. Welcome to the Christian Church. We're getting ready to worship. Y'all ready to worship? Everybody say yeah. Yeah. Say it again. Can I hear say yeah? Yeah. Got to get a witness. Yeah. Go on. Amen. All right. We're getting ready to start up. We're going to have some fun today. Uh, well, it all depends on which side of the fence you're on because we're in the number seven church and they lay out to see us. And it ain't fun, but it makes you grow. We put hair on your chest, so like my daddy used to say. So uh, that, that's coming. And uh, we're going to do something different in praise and worship today, too. We're just going to do some courses. And so uh, we're not even going to put it up on the screen. It's just courses. And y'all know, everybody knows. If you don't know, it's not like you do know. Everybody, stand up and sing. Y'all repeat this after me. These are the two most important hours of my week. Help me to cherish them. I didn't hear anybody. <laughs> we'll put it on the screen. <laughs> there we go. See, we're getting there. Kind of, sort of, maybe, if you look at one last but not the other one. Okay, because y'all read it now. Yes, now we can read it. Okay. These are the two most important hours of my week. Help me to cherish them. I'm here today to worship, not to be entertained. I'm singing to the audience of one, except my worship, oh Lord. Give Lord a hand clap for praise. Now today, that's it. That's all the words you get. Because y'all know that if you don't know them, you'll know them for some weird. Now, more technology. Hold on. We gotta wind it up. Okay, ready? Just follow, just follow us. You're gonna enjoy this. If you don't enjoy it, I promise you, you'll enjoy it next time. Ready? Here we go. Last song.
Benny that I don't know what color I'm talking about. So me and Benny have decided. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Benny had decided to leave the color calling to y'all. Okay. Okay. The usher is the tin man, the brass man in the back. So you can drop it off when you go in or drop it off when you go out. If you've already dropped it off, just hold up your hand. If you haven't dropped it off yet, hold it, hold it in your hand. And let's lift it up and repeat after me. I lift my offering to you. Let it please you, O Lord. This is my seed. Oh, it leaves my hand. It will never leave my life. You will multiply. Accept my seed, O oh Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap. No All right. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the time and opportunity we had to be in your house. And Father, we just ask you to touch and minister as we gather together in one mind and one accord this morning, Lord God. Let your hand reach down and touch exactly what we stand in need of this morning, Father. Father, we, we see the hands and we see the needs this morning, and we just ask you to supply those according to your riches and glory. That testimony be, may be given, Lord God, how you move not only in our lives but in this service. Jesus Christ's name, the church said. Amen. 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 Then remember also Brother Pollock's wife, Sister Pollock, her dad died. Uh, so remember remember her and Brother Pollock. They get ready to go to, I think, Colorado uh, Tuesday. So remember them in prayer. And, and let's remember these people that are getting these vaccines because some of these vaccines are not so, I mean, they're not people who are because of underlying conditions or just their body chemistry. They're not, it's not been a great thing. Uh, for this and, and so let's remember uh, people, my, my wife I know I didn't ask her if I could tell it so honey I'm sorry if you didn't want me to tell it but since she had her vaccine she's had heart palpitations now for a couple of days and sick with her stomach and she didn't have any this before she took her med I mean, her, 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 her very first vaccine so let's just remember and I know I've heard other people say things like sick at their stomach you know and things of that nature let's just Remember people that are getting there. We tell everybody to get your virus shot, and you get your virus shot, and then it makes you sick. Some people, not everybody, some people. So let's just remember everybody. Amen. 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 How many's got a light here? I'm not talking about for a cigarette either. Somebody. <laughs> you got a little light that you can shine for Jesus. Amen. Amen. But get me to have some more fun. Y'all ready? Ready? This the light of mine.
It is an awesome, awesome, awesome. God is good all of the time. Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, yeah, that's it. That's it. <laughs> and it's down here more stuff falling everywhere. I felt the rain falling and now everything else is falling. Amen. Can you turn that off, Eddie? Because now I'm getting feedback.
cobwebs are at. Hopefully not. <laughs> Revelation chapter 3, verse 14. Please, everybody, listen to this. Remember, there were seven churches. The seven churches represented seven churches of that time. It represented seven attitudes that are found in churches. It also represents <clears throat> seven church ages. Yeah, last week, Philadelphia represented the age that ended probably a decade, maybe two decades ago. Laodicea is not only in our backyard, Laodicea and ages in our backyard, our front yard, we're living smack in the middle of it. Okay? And I know this might, this, some of y'all are going to look at and go, wow, this is the most awesome sermon I ever heard. Some of them are going to say, I was glad he quit too. <laughs> Just know that it caused me to have a lot of self-examination too. I don't just preach something out there to throw something at somebody. I look at it and I think about it too before I preach it. If it don't speak to me, I don't speak it to you. <laughs> Revelation chapter 3 verse 14 And as an angel of the church of the Laodiceans write these, this to the, to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans I just remember that. Right, these things saith, saith the Amen and the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, and thou art neither hot nor cold, or cold nor hot. I would that you were cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, he don't just say this once or twice, he just keeps on saying it. You notice that? He don't just say it one time. He keeps on. Because you're not cold, because you're not hot. I wish you were, but you're lukewarm. And he says it three times. Wow. I think he's trying to get a message across to this church. Because they'll say, I do, but neither cold or hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Let me ask you a question. <laughs> Just a question. When Jesus Christ starts calling out his people, is your name in his mouth? Just thought. Just a thought. Because thou sayest I'm rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Wait a minute. This is the church that's got it all together. This church has got everything they need. They got the elaborate buildings. I watched uh, Prince or whatever it's called. Prince, I can't think of it, the, the Queen's husband get buried yesterday. And I watched that cathedral and all that stuff and all that pomp and circumstance. And because of the virus, they only had 30 people, I think, or maybe 35 in the service as they were lowering them down into the to the cathedral. They were lowering them down. And I, and, and I watched all that and I said all that stuff and all his medals and all his everything he had in him. He had so many medals that he had a table full of the medals to take care of some of them. And they had to have a, somebody had to call out all the different things he was, the knight of this and the knight of that, the protector of this and the, the admiral of the navy and blah, 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 blah. And they had his sword on top of his coffin and his arrow hat on top of his coffin and his coffin was lowering down with the British flag on it. And I thought, all of that, and all this singing, all this gospel being played around him, all this really, really fancy gospel music being played around him. But if he didn't, if Jesus didn't know him in his mouth, all the rest of it meant nothing. Nothing. Ninety-nine years old. The longest reigning monarch ever. Loved by everybody. But if Jesus doesn't have him in his mouth, if he doesn't speak him, wow. All that for nothing. I counsel thee, counsel thee 
to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thy eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. And as many as I love, I rebuke and chastise. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. My dad used to say, my mama would say, I'm not whipping you because I'm mad at you. I'm whipping you because I love you. And I said, Mama, I wish you didn't love me so much. <laughs> Behold, I stand at the door and knock. He doesn't tell any other churches this. Only church he tells. Behold, I stand at the door and and now we're going to come back to it. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me on my throne, even as I overcome, I will sit down with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. His father is just for the hands of his way. Father, I love you. I praise your name. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you, God, that you've helped us over the past few months get a fresh look at the seven churches. Today is the end of the seven churches sermon series, but it's not the end of Revelation. And I thank you for it, God. I thank you for the freshness that you give us and the up-to-date stuff. It's not something found way on back that doesn't matter. It's right here right now where we live. I thank you, God, also, Lord, that we've been also learning about back, back to basics and love, learning about the basics of love and uh, other basics, Lord. The next, every, next few weeks we're going to get more basics, but right now, let everybody have an ear to hear because I'm, I'm knowing, Lord, the trouble's coming. Matter of fact, not only is trouble coming, it's already here. We haven't seen the magnitude of it yet, but it's brewing. You can look at all the countries, Iran, China, Russia, our southern borders. You can look at everything that's going on around us and know that trouble is here. Ask you right now, Lord, to touch us, to help us, Lord, to understand that it doesn't matter who's sitting in the Oval Office. The only answer is who's sitting on the throne. And Father, we thank you for it right now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. And now, now I'm just going to, again, like I said, this may, this may not only sting, this may really throw some salt in some some wounds, but it's okay because it'll make you grow. I promise you it'll make you grow. But please do me a favor. Do not look at everybody else and say, boy, you sure got him, didn't you? Or you'd have gotten him if they'd have been here. No. Self-examination. I can't examine you unless I'm a doctor and I'm prescribing medicine. I can't examine you. Or unless I'm uh, doing some counseling, I can't examine you and help you with whatever. I have to examine myself first. Foremost, period. So, everybody do this. Everybody point just like I'm doing. Watch this. I want you to do just like this. Now I want you to do what say this to me. Lord, help me get it in my head and help it move to my heart. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so the Lord comes to his churches to speak to them about where they are. This is the same one I did every week, this one little slide here. To tell them where they are, where he wants them to be. And he comes to them with a message of comfort. Even this one is a message of comfort. And, of course, we just read it, so I'm not going to read it again. But, but there's up there, you know, uh, again, why, why he's trying to tell the people as he's talking to them. He says, you, you think you got it together, but you don't understand. You don't. Matter of fact, you don't, not only do you not have it together, but you're getting ready to lose what little bit you got. Wow. So now, Jesus looks at Laodicea, and I hope he never says this about me. He looks at Laodicea, and this is possum track talk. He looks at the church and says, I think I'm going to puke. Wow. Wow. 
Thank you, Brother Pugh. God, please, if you're ever going to get that way with me, let me know ahead of time. Because I don't want to do that to you. And if you do do that, I want to be out of the way. Amen. So, he looks at Laodicea. And he says, I think I'm going to puke. Now, now, now again, Laodicea, the church that made God sick, all the churches had a mixed message. Every last one of them, good to bad to ugly. With two exceptions, Philadelphia was only good. That was last week. And Laodicea is only ugly. The church that had more than anybody, and God says, you make me sick at my stomach, I think I'm going to puke. The ones that had the most, the ones that looked the awesomest, the ones that seemed to have it all together, and what's the most amazing part is, we're living in that neighborhood. Wow. Wow. So now, let's, let's go a little further. It was the most dangerous of conditions maintaining a church without the key ingredient. What's the key ingredient? Jesus. Hold on. You say, wait a minute, how do you say Jesus is not in the church? I'm going to get ready to build a case and if, you, if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. But I don't think I am. Laodicea means the people rule. That's what it means. Laodicea, the Laodicean age means the people rule. And say God rules, the people rule. Wow. Watch this. Let me just let me go for all of that. Making God sick to his stomach. Wow. I know this might be a shout, but I guarantee you when it's over with, it's going to be a shout. I promise you. Dangerous problems there. And here it is. Remember, remember, we had a good time last week. It was so awesome. I mean, we just had joy, 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 joy. But the day is not joy, 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 joy. I promise you. And it is the time that we live in. There was problems with control. The other churches, the other six, said the church of Ephesus or the church in Sardis. Always said the church of or in and gave the community. This doesn't give a community. This is the church of the Laodiceans. It's their church. By God's church, it's their church. Wow. Don't you think about anybody else right now? Don't you even say, uh-huh, I knew it, I knew it. No, 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 no. All I want you to do is think about yourself. That's it. Because when you stand before God, the only person you can talk about, the only one he's going to talk about is you. Okay? The church of the Laodicea is not, not the church in Laodicea. Not the church of Laodicea. The church of the Laodiceans. Doesn't give a community. It gives their name. So they had a problem with control. God, you're not going to control us. We know what we need, and we can take care of business. Every time I get in trouble with God, usually it starts with, I know what I need, God, and I can handle it. Okay. So there was a problem with control. There was also a problem with passion. They were indifferent. They, they, were, they were apathetic. They, they were just going through the motions. That's it. Shining like a bright, shiny penny. And God says, that doesn't impress me. Not one bit. There was a problem with perception, too. He looked at their, they looked at their position and they looked at their possessions and they looked at their power. And all Jesus saw was indifference and apathy and ignorance. I remember one time I was talking to a young man and he was really giving me a hard time. And I said, dude, you are just pure apathetic and ignorant. He said, well, I don't know and I don't care. <laughs> uh, I had to, had to kind, of, kind of throw something out there because it's getting really serious here. All right. So now, that, that's, that, that, if Laodicea, the people rule. Now, 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 if we're going to talk about Laodicea, because if you look at the outside, they look great. 
So let's turn them inside out. Let's not go to outside alone. Outside looking good, styled and profiling. If God not created anything better, he kept it in heaven for himself. Lay out a sea of head and together. I watched that yesterday and I thought, wow. All that pomp and circumstance. All that stuff. But the biggest thing I was concerned about was, was the man saved. That's all I could think about. Not all the pins and buttons and all the, the swords and all the medals. But was he saved? So now watch this. Laodicea inside out. You've got to turn it inside out if you want to see Laodicea the way God sees it. Okay? Something that we can't see. So what God did was God fixed it so we could see him. And so, again, I want, you to, I want you to think about yourself. I'm not saying this is anybody in here. I'm not pointing fingers. I'm not trying to say anybody's like this because I promise you that, that if there's one finger pointing out, there is three pointing back at me. I know better than to point fingers. Amen. Uh, matter of fact, when you got around Brother Hayes, if you pointed fingers, you volunteered. So I didn't point fingers. Are you ready? Lay out the inside out. Let's talk about it just a little bit. They were indifferent. The Bible said they were lukewarm. No, no, no. Well, lukewarm. Yeah, they're hard to deal with because, look, have you ever gone to somebody and every time you tell them something, you go, I know, I know, I know, I know. But you, I know. Sometimes I wish I had a little bitty button here. And a flat box right here. Nobody could tell. And they go, I know. I push the button and a big old boxing glove comes out and goes, boom. And goes back in so fast they don't know what hit them. And they go, what was that? Something hurt. I said, I know. I try my best and I don't succeed all the time. But I try my best and I go, I know. Church of God, I mean, from 
Edwards Community Church. Eddie Edmund Edwards III from Edward, North Carolina goes to Edward Church. <laughs> and he knows. <laughs> All right. He says, but now you're lukewarm. You're going from hot to cold. You're on your journey. But if you're cold, there's one thing. You know it. If you're hot, everybody else can see it around you. But if you're lukewarm, you don't need to see it. I know. <laughs> How did that feel? Hurt. I know. <laughs> So first, they were indifferent. Secondly, they were displeasing to God. You see, it was all about them. All about their comfort. All about them. That's it. It's all about them. Not about those that are dying. Not about those that are out there and needing to know that somebody cares about them. Not about uh, making sure that you minister to other people. Not about any of that. It's all about me. Their favorite song is, How Great I Am. How Great I Am. Wow. And God looks at it. And he goes, I sure hope God will look down at me, and I'm pretty sure he does from time to time. I think the biggest thing he does when he looks down at me is he laughs and goes, <laughs> yeah, I called him to preach. I really did. And you're going, you really called that guy to preach? Yeah, I really did. Believe it or not, I did. Or he says, oh, that hurt, didn't it? But I hate to think that God looks down at us and he goes, Because it's all about us. All about us. Not about God. It's all about us. Next word. That <coughs> hard. <coughs> lukewarm. Yeah. Get ready. They're irrational. They're satisfied. They said I'm rich. I mean, increase with goods. I don't need a thing. Let me tell you something about spiritual complacency. This is the biggest disease that has ramped, ramped through the church. Period. And this coronavirus has doubled it or tripled it or made it even worse. And that's spiritual complacency. When the churches were open, and people had jobs to do and they were getting stuff done. They were on time, on target, they were getting it done and now they're sitting home. So there'll be 14 days and wind up being over a year. And a lot of people have become spiritually complacent. Ah, uh, okay. Well, yeah. Sure. All right. See, well, I know this one here. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I know. Yeah. If you, right. You see, complacency is just like that coronavirus. You know, did you hear the joke about the germ? I, never mind, I don't want to spread it around. <laughs> Go get a switch. <laughs> complacency is like a virus that saps your energy. It doubles your attitude. It causes brain drain. There's no more challenge. I ain't got to worry about it. I'm satisfied. As long as me is my four, my four, no more. As long as we got together, it don't matter about anybody else. It don't matter about the people that are going to bed hungry tonight. It doesn't matter about the people that are going to die and go to hell in the next week. It doesn't matter that the people I used to minister to, I don't minister to anymore because it don't matter because all that matters is why? Welcome to Laodicea. So, brain drain. There's no more spiritual challenge. None. Let me ask you a question, or I'll say this to you. If what you did yesterday still looks big, you're there. If all you can ever talk 
about is yesterday. All my troubles seem so far away. I wish that I could only stay. <laughs> yeah. If yesterday is still your big hurrah, then you may be spiritually complacent. Because I'm always trying to think, and I'm not saying I'm anybody special, but I'm always trying to think, what's the next thing we got to do? How can we make this different? How can we change things? If you'll notice, things get changed all the time. You know why things get changed all the time? It's because I'm trying to make sure we don't get complacent. Complacency is irrational. That's where they were at. I told you it was going to be fun, didn't I? <laughs> I'm just going to let that picture just soak in. It says it all itself. I don't have to say anything. Just let it soak in. I have people all the time in B5 tell me how blind they were to what they were doing and how complacent they had gotten. And then they said, Jesus showed up with a badge. And see, guess what? It woke me up. Jesus with a badge. Wow. That's amazing. That's not my words. It's their words. They're independent of God. Independent. It says, we have need of nothing. If I have need of nothing, then why do I need God? Simple as that. Got what I need. My belly's full. I got gas in my tank. I got air conditioning in my house. I got heat in my house. I'm fine. There's a difference of being content and independent. All those things should make you content, but not independent. Because God, without you, I'm nothing. Without you, I know that I would not have gas in my tank. I would not have a car. I would not have a house. Independent. They have need of nothing. And they were insens insensitive. Why? Because you remember the story about the king's new clothes? And the king's walking around naked and everybody's scared to tell him that he's naked so they just say, yeah, it's a good looking suit. Got some wrinkles in it, but it's a good looking suit. Spiritual insensitivity. They ought to see it didn't even know that they were naked, poor, and blind. Wow. I can see what makes God sick. They walked around like they're the best thing ever ever hit the earth. Walked around like the best thing since sliced bread, the best thing since earwax, but you know what? God says, y'all can't even see how it really is. You know, as a counselor, as a pastor, as a father, as a human being, I've discovered there's three kinds of truths in this world between two people. There's your perception of the truth, my perception of the truth, and God knows the truth. I can go to my grave saying I'm right and he's wrong. And he can go to his grave saying he's right and I'm wrong because we have our perception of the truth. But God's looking at us saying both of y'all are knuckleheads. This could be solved so easily. So easily if you weren't so insensitive and thought you had to be right. This here is the saddest of all. This is very, very, very powerful. First, the Laodicean people, they were impoverished spiritually. They said, I have need of nothing, so they didn't even exercise their self in God enough. Watch. 
They didn't even exercise God enough. All they did was have their excuses. I'm fine. I'm fine. I know. I know. I know. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, me and God got it. Yeah, 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 yeah. They were so filled with excuses that they didn't exercise themselves before God. And if they had to exercise themselves before God, this last one would not have hit them. Finally, they're isolated. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. That picture is a beautiful picture. I love to see it. I mean, it tells people all the time, you want to get saved, he'll come in and help you. He'll come in. If you let him in, that's the door of your heart, he'll let you in. But when you think about who he's sending it to, it's not so cool anymore. It's not such a lovely picture anymore. Because now he's not just talking about talking to the world, he's talking to his church. Now, is he talking to his church? He's talking to his church in this age that we live in right now. You see, what was so sad about Laodicea was Jesus was nowhere inside that church. He's outside knocking on the door. He's not inside that church. But you know what's even sadder? It is they did not even know it. Wow. Kind of like Samson after he got his head shorn. And they said, the, the Philistines are upon you. And he said, I just do like I always do. Get up and shake and bake. And I'll take care of business. He didn't even realize his hair was gone. That's where Laodicea is at. Again, I just got to say it one more time. It's sad that Jesus was nowhere in the church. But it's even sadder that they didn't even recognize them. Now I'm getting ready, I'm getting closer to the end. Somebody say, please hurry up. <laughs> They're being spewed out of his mouth right now. Look at that. I wish you were cold or hot. Because you're not, you're lukewarm. I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. Now, no other church does he say I'm standing at the door knocking. And no other church does he give this warning to. That's because he's talking about just before the rapture and just before the tribulation. We're at the end right now. This is the Laodicean age. And I'm not saying our church is a Laodicean church. I had to think we we'll change our name from every Christian church to Laodicean church. Wow, I'm not talking about that. But the age that we live in, there's a lot of Laodicean churches. But what really gets it is the Laodicean Christians. And spew out of the mouth. You see, he gives the greatest warning here. And the reason he gives this warning, watch this. He says, because you are lukewarm. If rigor mortis was set in, then you would know you needed some help. You knew it. The Holy Ghost would convict you. You knew you needed help. You would get up and you would take care of business because you were lukewarm. Because you were cold. You knew you were cold. You better listen. If you were hot, you were already listening. But because you were lukewarm, you're going, I know. I got this. I know. I know what I'm doing. Anybody ever told your parents, I know what I'm doing. And a couple hours later, you're calling them, can you come bail me out? Not necessarily out of jail, whatever kind of trouble you got in. Because you look warm, you know what you look. I know what I'm doing! <laughs> yep it, yep it, yep it, yep it, yep it! He's going to give you the taste test. Every last one of us is getting a taste test. And here's the taste test. Y'all ready? If he tastes you, the Bible tells us to taste and see, oh, the Lord is good. But we're not the only ones testing. We're not the only ones doing the taste test. Some of them God to taste. He's doing the taste test now to the layout of the in church. And when he fellowships with you when he partakes with you if you're
you're cold, he can talk to you and you'll listen. If you're hot, you're already listening, but if you're lukewarm, I started to get some lukewarm stuff and bring up here and just spew it everywhere. But because of COVID-19, I didn't. So that's one good thing about COVID. I decided not to spit. Thank you. <laughs> we appreciate it. Yeah. Not only that, but I got a good dose of it last night because we had this little thing, that, this little air freshener that goes off every 15 minutes in the bathroom. And it's sitting up on top of the counter. And I was working on the ceiling. And I climbed up on the ceiling, about underneath the ceiling. I'm up there working on the ladder. And I get right in front of that thing. And as soon as I get up there yesterday and start painting, all of a sudden that thing goes off. And it shoots me with glade, right? <laughs> and I was even, at the time, I was even thinking about spitting up today. After that happened, I decided I'm going to spit it. Because <laughs> that more cool. Look at the timing. Watch the timing. Laodicean church, the last church. After this week, or after chapter 4, the church is never mentioned again in Revelation. Ever. This is the end of the church age. God's testing and tasting the church and testing and tasting individuals and those that are lukewarm that I know I got it all together. I don't need you, God. I got what I need. I got it all together. I know what I'm doing. I'm smart. I'm intelligent. I know how to handle it. Well, spew out of his mouth, I really believe means I'm going to spew you in the tribulation. You miss the rapture. Didn't say you missed heaven. You missed the rapture. The Bible talks about many people making it into heaven through the tribulation period, but it's all because they gave their lives. They were beheaded. They were martyred. All kinds of things. But I'll tell you what. Your head on a chopping block is the best cure I know. First of all, the best cure for lukewarmness is missing the rapture. Can you imagine we're all here right now and I'll just say there's three people on that road right there. Look, nobody's there. I'm not pointing at anybody. Won't point at Dudley. There's three people. Just pretend there's three people. And the rapture took place while I was preaching. All of us went. And those three people were left. That is the greatest cure for lukewarmness has ever been. Only problem is, they missed the bus. They missed the first flight. So, the second cure for lukewarmness. Say that doesn't even make sense. What's the biggest thing going on nowadays? People losing their heads. That head on that guillotine is another thing that'll take care of coldness. It'll take care of lukewarmness. It'll get you hot. Of course, I had an uncle that worked, was in the French Revolution. He was not too smart. Him and two other guys got sentenced to the guillotine. The first guy got there to get get done, they pulled the trigger and nothing happened. They said, well, we can't double, double jeopardy. We can't do this twice, so go. And so then they asked the next guy, put him up there, and they went to pull the thing and nothing happened. He said, you can go. So they put my old crazy uncle up there and said, you ready? He said, I'm not doing anything to get that thing fixed. Okay. Trying to make a little lighter because this is tough stuff here. Ready? Get ready, throw the book, burn the book. Lukewarm Christians. Ready? How, how, how can we tell if we're a lukewarm Christian? I'm glad you ask. Ready? Start looking at these, I'm getting ready to show you. 
And if, well, first, let me just tell you this. First, let me just do this part. I, I almost got to hit it myself. He tells them, he tells Laodicea, which also is telling us, that you need to rely on me and come back to me. And here's the three things he said. First, he said, I want you to buy me gold tried in fire that you may as be rich. What he's saying is, I don't worry about your earthly bank account. I want you to show up to see your heavenly bank account. Say, say, are you worried about building your stuff down here? You're just trying to build a name for yourself down here. You're trying to get your act together down here. But are you concerned about after you leave this place? Have you been a good steward? Have you really been a good steward? Have you really concerned about other people and, and put your treasure up above? Secondly, true salvation, he says, you need to get you some white raiment to cover up your nakedness. What's he saying? You need to get saved or rededicated or redone, however you want to say it. I know some people, I like to hold them down to the bubble stop. Make sure that this time when they're baptized, they stayed baptized. And then true discernment. You know, Laodicea was known for an eye treatment. It went all over the known world. They had an eye treatment there, an eye salve that helped with blindness. It's amazing that God calls Laodicea blind. And they're surrounded by an eye salve that won't help them because they're not physically blind, they're spiritually blind. So now, here we go. Get ready. Y'all read that. Y'all say that together. Ready? On three. We do it. One, two, three. Let's try that again. Ready? Jesus didn't die for you to be a lukewarm Christian. I promise you he wasn't lukewarm when he carried that cross up that hill. I promise you when he could have called ten thousands of angels to come help him and he didn't because he was dying for you. I promise you he was not lukewarm. The lukewarmers were the ones that ran from the cross. There was only one, only one apostle that stayed at the cross with him, John. He was the one that was hot. The other was that fear bring lukewarmness to him. So watch, watch this. Now, how can you tell? Life's a little crooked. How, how can you tell? I want you to watch this now. Do not think about your wife. Do not think about your husband. Don't think about your children. Don't think about your co-workers. I want you to think about you only. You only. Ready? How can you tell if you're a lukewarm Christian? Because remember, lukewarm means literally lukewarm is going from hot. It's a journey. Lukewarm just don't happen overnight. It's a journey. It goes from hot to cold. And on your way down, you're lukewarm. So ready? Get ready. Number one. How can you pick out a Look on Christ. Number one, God is no longer first in their life. I can stop right there. Take care of the rest of them, but I won't. I'm going to keep on going. God is no longer first in their life. You can tell. You can tell by their actions. You can tell by their checkbook. You can tell by what they do for others. You can tell by their actions. Number two, you just give God your leftover time, talent, and treasure. He's no longer first. I just give him what I got left over. I, you know, I got a couple of minutes. Let's talk. You know, yeah, I can, I can do this, but you know, I really don't have time because there's an episode of Bonanza on that I've only seen 50 times. Anybody seen any new, new episodes of Bonanza lately? How about the new episodes of MASH? What about the new episodes of Dennis the Menace? No. Well, you know, I, I, I really need to do this. Well, God, God understands. Really? He carried a cross for you. And you can't carry a small cross for Him. See, give God your leftover time. Your leftover talent. Your leftover treasure. He's no longer first. Unless you get in trouble... And then all you own it then. But as soon as trouble starts going away. Number three. 
You have a decreased interest in the things of God. Just to get you excited to hear about things going on for God. And now, yeah, yeah. Sure, I really got something else I need to do. I hope nobody's checked any of these boxes yet. But when we get through, I'm going to tell you how many boxes you got to check to consider yourself on the way to lukewarmness. I'll tell you once we get through. I want you to be honest. You ain't got to tell anybody else. Just keep it in your head. You got to go to church for social reasons if you go at all. Spiritual show and tell. I want people to see me. I want to see my talent. I want to hear me sing. I want to bless them by them hearing, seeing me on the pew. I want to show and tell. Look at me. Y'all tell it. There's not just people that you sit down and try to talk to them and they're so busy talking about themselves and finally they take a breath and they say, okay, enough of me talking about me. Now you talk about me for a while. I know y'all shout me down. I've got to stop for all the shouts. Get ready. Remember, this, this didn't, I didn't say, get them, Lord, get them. I was thinking, oh, oh. find that they make excuses for their chill. Blame becomes their game. Well, I wouldn't be this way before for them. If they hadn't talked about me, if they hadn't said this, if they'd have let me have my way, I wouldn't be this way. If they just let me do it instead of them, then I wouldn't be this way. Y'all ready? Let me tell you how many you got to check. To be on the road to Luke Warmings. Ready? There's one, two, three, four, five. I only got five. I had seven. I brought it down to five. Six. Thank you. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. I that spiritual show and tell standing in that one. So it's actually just still to five. Anyway, about it. Let me tell you how many that you don't have to check. If you've checked all five of them, yeah. <laughs> That's sure. For sure. If you check four of them, yep. If you check three of them, oh, if you check two of them, oh, if you check one of them, it don't matter. If you check any of them, you're on your way. Your journey to lukewarmness. Any one of them. Any one of them. The more you check, can tell you how deep you got in there. Because remember, lukewarmness is a journey from hot to cold, from fervor to rigor mortis. Down in here is the lukewarmness. And the farther down you go, the more boxes you're going to check. Okay, y'all go home. Oh, well, that's right. I want to get you out of this. Hold on, hold on. That's right. How you get out of it? You tell us we don't have a chance, we're gone, we're going to be spewed out of this mouth, we're going into tribulation, you know, we're all, all, all every, no, I'm not saying that at all. I'm not even pointing any fingers at anybody. I'm just trying to keep myself out of trouble. I just want to keep myself out of trouble. I don't want to be spewed out to, the, to tribulation, number one. And number two, my job as pastor is I got to tell this so y'all don't wind up in tribulation. You got enough tribulation as it is about having to go into the great tribulation. So how... how how can I tell that there's lukewarm repentance going on? Lukewarm repentance. I'm going to turn things around. Ready? Y'all look like you're ready to be left. <laughs> Just leave me alone, bro. Just leave me alone. Ready? I will tell y'all this, but if some of y'all are trying to say the signs of lukewarm repentance, some of y'all go, I know. You might as well go ahead and scratch about 10 more things off, okay? Ready? Number one, put God first again. Put Him first. When you met your spouse and you really, really got head over heels with them and you wanted to make them your spouse, you wanted to marry them, 
Did you put them last? Did you care less about them? Let's get married. Well, okay, if you think that's a good thing to do. No, you got excited. When you first got saved, thinking that God saved you from not only saved you from your sin and saved you from hell, but opened up heaven for you and all the things that come along with it with God's word, you got excited. And along the way, and you can't blame everybody else, the journey from hot to cold. You can't blame anybody else. That journey from hot to cold, you can, if it makes you feel better, blame somebody. Blame me. That's fine. But when you stand before God, He's going to say, Pastor, I didn't do it. He told you the truth. He didn't want to hear it. Watch. On the way down, you can blame everybody you want, but God's not looking at everybody else. God says, if you put me first again, guess what? Guess what's going to happen? You're going to turn that ship around and you can start going this way. If you're doing this today, all you got to do is put him first, and that starts you, it turns you around. And you start going back up the scale. Number one, put God first. Number two, no more leftover time, talent, or treasure. No more. You see something need to be done. You know something's got to happen. You know what you know what God's told you you're going to be doing with your time, talent, and treasure. You're not doing it. Hey. Don't give God leftovers. You say, well, that's all I got is leftovers. But I can tell you what he can do with leftovers. He can fill up, he can take five loaves of two fishes and take the leftovers and fill up 12 baskets full. If he needs to. But I hate to think he's having to fill up the baskets and loaves because we're giving him leftovers. Number three, get increased interest back into God. Think about him again. Let him be on your mind. Talk to him. When you're praying, you ain't got to be down on your knees at the altar every hour of the day. Just be talking to him. Talk to him. Father, I need you. You got to help me. I I'm losing my interest. You got to show me. Show me what I, I need to do. Don't let me blame the pastor and blame this person and blame that. I take full responsibility. Then watch this. When you go to church, go for spiritual reasons. Not so you can be seen. Not so you can be heard. Not so people will say you can just shut your wife up. I went to church the very first time to shut my wife up. I'll be honest. I went to shut her up and my crazy cousin lived next door. I said, if I go one time, will y'all leave me alone, you crazy women? They said, you go one time, we won't ever ask you to go again. I said, deal. And that one time got me. Go to church for spiritual reasons. To grow. To grow in God. To fellowship. To learn of God and learn of, learn of, learn of His words. Learn of His power. Not just to be seen. If I could, I'd hide behind there and do it. But y'all would think I weren't here. So if I got to here in front of you, I don't want to be seen. Watch this. No more spiritual show and tell. No more. Finally, refuse excuses for your chill. Take responsibility instead of blaming somebody. Take responsibility. It's so much easier to blame somebody. So much easier. But if they hadn't done me like that, I wouldn't be this way. If they hadn't been so mean to me, I wouldn't be so cold. Really? Do you know the cross takes away all of our excuses to treat people that way? Because look how bad they treated Christ. And it was our sin that had him beat beyond recognition. And still he did it for us. There ain't a day goes by I don't have to pull up my big boy pants and get it done. Not a day goes by. But I made my mind up that I'm not going to let. You know, like Brother Hastings said, he used to be so funny. Brother Hastings used to say this, it's funny. Somebody said, I'd go to church. I'd go to church, but there's so many hypocrites there. 
And Brother Hayes said, I'd rather go to church with the hypocrites than go to hell with them. <laughs> Matter of fact, if you got somebody that you might think is a little hypocritical, maybe it's because they're hurt and hurting people hurt people. And maybe if you could show them the way, they might follow in behind you and learn how to learn how to let the stuff go. Literally. Literally. It's time. To step in out of the cold. Everybody stand. Brandon, will you come play something softly, please? I didn't want to do Laodicea. I hated to do Laodicea because I know Laodicea is this age that we live in. I know that Laodicea is not only this age that we live in, but Laodicea also is in our back door. Some of us is in our front door. Some of us were staying right in the middle of it. But one thing I can do now is I can stand before God and say, God, I delivered it. What they do with it's theirs. I delivered it. I'm free. Every head bowed. Every eye closed. Jesus loves us. Jesus loves us so much that he died knowing Jesus died knowing that we were the ones that drove the nails in his hands. We drove the nails in his feet. Every drop of blood in his body left out of it and he died. His heart burst. And we're the ones that did it. He didn't make any excuses. He took care of business. And now he stands before God in a very powerful, powerful way making intercession for all of us. Let me ask you a question with every head bowed, every eye closed, I want anybody looking around. Please, nobody looking around. I'm going to look around, but that's it. Nobody looking around. I'm going to ask a couple of questions right now. And the first question is actually going to be the preface to the second question before I even ask for an answer. Are you as close to God as you want to be? Are you as close to God as you feel like you need to be? Just let us sit there and think for a minute. Don't think about anybody else. It's just you. That rapture trumpet can sound today. The rapture trumpet can sound any time. There is no prophecy left be fulfilled for the rapture trumpet to sound. The next question. close to God as you feel like you should be or you've moved away from God where you used to be did you check off any of those boxes that I hit up there those five boxes did you look at any of them did they have your name beside one two three four all five of them if it had your name by that I can promise you that's one of the reasons why you're not as close to God as you used to be. Lukewarmness is not an overnight thing. Lukewarmness is a journey. 
a journey from hot to cold. There's just different variations of it, but from hot to cold, lukewarm. Now, with all that said, nobody looking around here, we eye closed. I just want to ask, and, and, and there's no cameras, so nobody sees you. Cameras are this way, not back there where you're at. If you're here and you would say, Pastor, you read my meal today. Those things you talked about at Laodicea, that I could check off some of those included with the lukewarmness checklist. And I really need to make things right. I'm not going to make an example out of you. I'm not even going to let anybody know you said it. Nobody, just me and you. That's it. And God. But if you put that hand up, that'll be the first step that turns that lukewarmness journey from going down to cold back up to hot. If you find yourself anywhere in that today, when nobody's looking, every eye closed, but you put that hand up and say, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Father, you see these hands. You see these people. You know, God, what they need. You know what boxes they picked out. You know where they were at. I ask you right now, Lord, to touch them. To help them. Because when it's all over with, the only thing that's going to matter when they stand before you is the them. When you're checking their condition, it's them. No excuses. Nothing but responsibility. And Father, I thank you for touching today. Now I'm asking another crazy question. How many would say, well, I'm not really sure about all those things, but I do feel, I feel them kind of nipping at me and I don't want them nipping at me. I, I want to be able to push them aside and not be nipped because I'm virtually feeling myself getting drawn into it and I really need help from God to keep from getting pulled in to this Laodicean age mindset, lukewarm journey. I just need God to help me so I don't fall prey to this. Nobody's looking around, every eye closed. Would you put up that hand? Bless the Lord. Bless him. Ask you right now, Lord, to minister to everybody in a very powerful, powerful way. Help us break free of the gravitational pull of the layout of sea and age. It's a strong gravitational pull. It's a very powerful gravitational pull. And it can suck the spiritual life out of us. Let's all pray together. Ready? Father. I love you. I praise your name. I thank you for all that you say, all that you do, all of your promises. You said you were the yes and the amen. And you told the Laodiceans if they would repent, you would give them a place in heaven with you. Lord, we repent. We're turning around. The lukewarm journey is ending soon because I will be hot again. And I thank you for it, Lord. I thank you for it. I thank you for it. I thank you for it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Did I tell y'all how good y'all look today? Yeah.
I can't help it. Some of you look a little better if you put your mask back on, but other than that, some of you look better by taking my glasses off too. So in all kinds of ways we can make it happen. All right. Next week, I'm not sure if we're going to jump right into Revelation chapter four or we're going to go. Ahead. That's probably what we're going to do. We're going to we're going to go through Revelation now. now let me just ask this question. Uh, how many want to go all the way through to the end of Revelation? How many just want to hit sprinkles and just hit places in Revelation? Just in, 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 I mean, I'm talking about, there's a difference in verse by verse and episode by episode. You know what I'm saying? Episode by episode can be all the way, but it won't take so long if we go episode by episode by episode. Like the four horsemen, you can do the four horsemen in four weeks, or you can do the four horsemen in one week. That's what I'm talking about. So, so y'all let me know, and and that's what we're going to do. But along the way, we're still going to have our Back Basics Sunday on the first of the month, and some other things along the way. But this has been very enlightening. Uh, it's been great. Uh, it's, it's sometimes I'm rejoicing when I read it. Sometimes I'm not so rejoicing when I read it. But I know in the end, uh, we will rejoice. Amen? Amen. Ain't God good? All the time, God is good. Father God, we just praise you, Lord, we love you. And Lord, help us to get through this bad time. Lord, we pray that you just don't let the good life seduce us. We are probably the most blessed nation in the world. Help us, Lord, not to be thinking about ourselves. Help us, Lord, to know that it's a gift from you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen. amen.